And uh, Jim mentioned a while ago some of the things people have done, what Christ did. We, we go through nothing like that. But I sit and ponder sometimes, do you realize what a task was before Noah, building this ark, in that time, in that age? It was, look at that mall they built a few years ago. Uh, now, where is that located? I can't remember, but it's the new ark that they built where people go. I mean, that's, even by the standards of today's world, that's a big, big thing. Imagine Noah. But Noah believed God. So he built the ark. We know Abraham is the father of faith. But what I really want to look at here is, is the thing that we need to strive for. It says, these all died in faith, not having received the promise, but having seen them far off. And uh, it says, they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. Abraham, it said here, uh, uh, you know, that Abraham went through his life as a sojourner and a pilgrim looking for that city whose builder and maker was God, not made by the hands of man. That's the same city we're looking for mentioned in Revelation chapter 21 when the new Jerusalem comes down. Amen. Abraham was looking for the same thing we still are looking for. He didn't receive that promise, but he saw it from afar off. And he believed God. But as we, we go on, I want to go into numbers now if anybody wants to go there because I'm going to look at some examples and some dangers we can run into concerning our faith. And we're all subject to this at any time. It can it can happen to all of us, but we're going to look at I want to look at this story about the 12 spies. It's here in number 13. You know, God came to Moses and said, "Send me in to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every one a leader among these. And it said, So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord, all of them men who were heads of the children of Israel. Now, you know, the thing we want to look at here is, is they didn't send just anybody. These other ten spies were equal to Joshua and Caleb. They were leaders. There's twelve tribes. Twelve went out. So they went out together. And we find that uh, Moses had gave them uh, uh, had gave them uh, things to do. They were to study. He told them then they told him, you know, they sent them out. I'm not going to read all that, but they sent them out to gather grapes, to check out the people and everything. Well, the, the men come back uh, and said, now they departed. This was after being in that uh, valley for 12, 40 days. They spied out that area. And it said, now, when they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation, the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran Kadesh, they brought back word to them and then all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Then they told him and said we tr uh, s said um, they told him and said we went to the land where you sent us and truly it flows with milk and honey. Now you know they had been there. They had seen it. These young men that went into there they went in there knowing God had promised them this land. He had promised it to them. It was theirs for the taking. But then we get back over here and uh, it said, you know, they, 
This was the report from the spies that says, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong, and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites and the Zebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains of the Canaanites, dwell by the sea and among the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quietened the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and take possession before we are able to overcome it. Now, you know, this is where we're going to get into faith. Caleb remembered that God was with him. He remembered the promise. And then, but the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people who we saw saw in it are great are men of great stature. There we saw giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight what I'm wanting to get at here is our walk in life sometimes if we set our eyes on circumstances and we often do I'm very very guilty of this but when we look around about us at the circumstances, Satan will allow us to forget all of God's promises to us. We no longer, we're, we're, we're no different than the ten spies. They seen giants with, have you ever known somebody that looked past all the good just to see the bad? And that's what we don't want to be like. And I know we all fall. I'm world's worst. I fall in this trap many times. But I do have to realize when I do do that, I'm not pleasing God. Because for me to please God, I've got to believe that if I serve him, he rewards me. Amen. Now, Satan is around to devour. Satan would love to eat every one of us in this congregation today for lunch. And if you doubt his strength, I want to go back. I'm not going to go in the Bible, but I'm going to recall. We all know the story of Adam and Eve. I mean, that's one of the first things we read in the Bible. Eve believed God up to the point. She had faith. Satan was there in that tree as a serpent. He said, you know, said, you know, eat of this fruit. First, Eve said, no, we can't eat of that fruit. Well, he questioned her differently. I'm going off a of recall, so I'm not quite perfect at it. He questioned her. She said, no, said, if we eat of that tree, we'll die. Well, at that point in time, she still believed God. But Satan was so cunning, and Genesis talks about how cunning it was he talked her right into it at that moment he told her no God don't want you to be like him he don't want you to know good and evil so she looked at it she said well it does look good <laughs> and that's exactly what she said that looks like good food so she eats at that point in time, her faith wasn't in God anymore. And though it's not as drastic, we know what that brought about. That brought about what we live through today. Suffering, pain, death. It didn't exist until then. God come down with Adam and Eve. Adam and in the cool of the evening would walk and talk with him. So I'm just telling you folks, it's easy slip up. 
We, we've looked at this. We can judge him ten spies. All we want to. But we need to first look at ourselves. Yeah. Because there's many times in our walk of faith we let the things around us, the things that, that takes off in our life, that hurts us deeply, all the things, everything that was lost in the garden is exactly why our lives are filled. Our days are filled with sorrow. The Bible tells us. Jesus said, in this life there will be troubles. But be a bit of cheer. I have overcome the world. And that's the hard thing. The hard thing is to take our eyes off of our troubles and put them toward God. But we can do it. And he blesses us for it. We have a spirit in us that is a spirit that is leading us to life eternal. The Holy Spirit's desire, God's desire is for us to live with him in that kingdom that Abraham was looking for. So we, we need to continue on in faith, as Jim had mentioned earlier today. And I want to show you, I just want to look at this before we go back, and it'll, it'll soon be closing. But, you know, the argument went on, and the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation and said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. Now, so many times, now I hope none of us have ever been this bad, drastic, but, you know, they go back to that every time uh, as we read. You know, every time they wouldn't, couldn't see the light. Y'all remember when they was crying for quail and, and uh, said, oh, we could be sitting at the pots in Egypt. They were slaves. They were brick makers. They were wading around in the mud all day. But they, oh, if we could be there. And oh, we were like that a lot. We cry and grumble and over any little snotty thing that comes along. <laughs> And we need to be we need to be thoughtful. Uh, I'm I'm not standing up here without any guilt, believe me. But a lot of times I look at myself, and the only thing I can say is, "Is poor baby," <laughs> you know, get over. And uh, you know, but we are like that. It's sad, but we're just like them people. We always want to go back to a place that was not a good place to be. But uh, I always got a kick out of it when they was crying for the quail. God gave them so much out of that seat. They ate themselves sick off of it. So, you know. Uh, but anyhow, then Moses and Aaron fell on their face. Now, this is the righteous men, the ones that we all know what Joshua's future was after this. But uh, uh, fell on their face. Uh, uh, with the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, Caleb, the son of Junith, who were among them, those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And then they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us to this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor feel the, fear the people of the land, for they are, they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. I mean, Joshua and Caleb was pleading with them, the opposite of what the other spies reported. And, you know, uh, and the congregation said, Stone them with stones. They were wanting to kill Joshua and Caleb for the report. Said stone, kill them, get rid of them. And uh, now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the meeting for all the children of Israel. Now I encourage you. This chapter we're over into chapter fourteen now. Sometimes this week read these chapters. Uh, as you go on, God. God was that very day was going to destroy everybody but the righteous of a bunch, which, you know, I'm just using a few names, Moses, Joshua, Caleb, I'm sure they was more than that. But Moses, 
ask God not to. Said, you know, as he had before, said, God, if you kill them out here, then the whole world's going to say, look what their God done to them. So God, you know, gave them, but they, they didn't receive them. In other words, as we have said in Hebrews, those people didn't receive a good report that day. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, we don't want to be those people. We want a good report. And, you know, I pray for each of us that we will. But now I'm going to finish up going back to Hebrews. And uh, this this is something that will be actually the last verse in chapter 11 and a couple verses in chapter 12. But, and I'm going back to that. It goes through, now I want to, Jim had talked earlier about, you know, Christ. Well, all these people in faith. I mean, by faith, you know, I'm just going to look at the by faith. I'm not going to read every verse. But by faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hidden. His mama hid him. And we know the story there. And uh, uh, we find by faith, uh, he forsook Egypt. And it says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down and you know it's it's remarkable and I'm, I wanted to mention this simply for the fact that uh, uh, by faith and I want you to hear this the harlot Rahab now this lady you know apparently we know the laws of God she had to change her way did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies in her grace. And what more shall I say? So, I mean, God spared her. Why? Because she believed and took care of the spies that God had sent. And this was a different instance than the spies we were looking at. But it said they were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain by the sword, they wandered about in sheepskin and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented. Now this this chapter of faith here has always amazed me and to read. I mean, these people face things that we have not yet faced. And uh, it says, and all of these having obtained good testimony through uh, through faith did not receive the promise God having provided something better for us that we should be made perfect that they should not be made perfect apart from us there these people such as we if the Lord tarries Jim we'll sleep till that day that the Lord comes back and then we all receive it at the same time now, that's a wonderful thing to think about. We're, we sleep with our fathers until that day, and there's a day coming. We all know the day that the Lord comes back. These who died, our mothers and fathers that died in our time, our siblings, if we died in Christ, we receive the promise at the same time that New Jerusalem comes down, and we're in heaven. certainly worth fighting for. Yeah. We need to fight for this. And in conclusion, we're going to look therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by, by so great a cloud of witness. Now this is something that we can't get out of. Uh, Paul writes, and most people think Paul wrote Hebrews, it's not for sure, but I, you know, I'm using his name anyhow. But anyhow, you know, we have a cloud of witness. We have all the scriptures showing us and teaching us about the life of the faith. And they were many, I want you to put your emphasis on one thing else too. Each one of these names here, we all know that they didn't live their lives perfectly. They blundered. We're allowed to blunder. But they believed God, and it was counted for as righteousness. 
So, you know, we need to keep that, but we're surrounded by a letter, but it says, and this is a, something we need to really work at doing. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father. Now, you know, that's where, when all these circumstances, like the cities are fortified, there's giants in that land. Oh, Lord, I just can't do that. Not me. When God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit and asks us to do, we need to be open to what God wants us to do. It, it's usually a small task. And I'm certainly not saying this to rattle any changes, but in uncomfortable in uncomfortable places, for me, this right here is one of the most uncomfortable places I can be. I don't feel qualified. I'm not a pastor. But I do believe God speaks to us through people. I believe God spoke to Jim. And I believe God wants me here. So I was obedient. Yes. And there's things God asks us to do. Just be careful not to wave it off. He may want us to go see somebody. Sometimes it's like Jim says. You know, it's in our heart to do something. It's good. And we neglect to do it because we are looking at circumstances. Oh, I need to go here or I need to go there. I'm not convicting or condemning anybody for anything. I'm just saying consider where your thoughts come from. Because the Holy Spirit is always working in us. Wanting and desiring to guide us in a direction that he would like for us to go. So in saying that, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for everyone here. God bless you.